Hi, I'm David Katz with ThePostGame.com, and it's a pleasure to be joined today by the great Maryland Terrapin, Len Elmore. Len, thanks for joining us today. It's my pleasure. So you follow, you study the game of college basketball from back when you played till today. What do you see as the biggest differences between the way the game is being played today on the court and the way you were playing it back then? Well, I think it's a fundamental lack of experience and a lack of fundamentals. Uh, I think over the years, when you have shortened careers in college, you're not exposed to the teachings of your coach. You're not exposed to the repetition of being fundamentally sound players. So you have players coming out of high school. A lot of players stay one or two years as star players and ultimately move on. And obviously that creates a void and a vacuum with regard to quality play as well as fundamentally sound play. Uh, that's why we have so many issues right now with shooting with uh, defense and, and other execution in, in the game because of the lack of fundamentals. If you notice, many of the teams who have guys who stay until their senior year, even though they're in so-called mid-major conferences, have the ability to remain on par with some of the high Division I teams simply because they have more experienced players. Do you think that the culture of AAU basketball and what's happening at the high school level is also contributing to that in any way? Or do you think AAU is actually good in terms of helping to you know, improve fundamentals and things like that? Well, I think, again, there is an issue. There's a huge gap between what is taught in travel teams and an AAU as part of the travel team culture. Uh, where the ball is just rolled out and more times than not practices, scrimmage up and down, no real focus on drilling, on um, repetitive uh, practice in, of the great fundamentals. I think one of the biggest issues is that high school coaches have been obscured by the travel team coaches. More games are played in travel team many times than there are in high school. And high school is usually where the coaches will drill you on fundamentals and will try to keep you immersed in, in skills of the game. So, you know, I think that gap, uh, uh, creates a huge problem once you get to the college game. What is your view on the shoe companies? Because they seem, one, it's great, they pump a lot of money into the sport, but they're also responsible in a lot of ways for determining where players go after high school through their AAU programs. A lot of money is funneled through shoe companies. What are your thoughts on the role that shoe companies are playing in the sport of college basketball? Well, I'm happy that they are providing resources and allowing kids a platform by which they can demonstrate their skills. I don't like the idea of them having influence on where a young man goes to college because oftentimes it might be fit a fit for their brand uh, to go to that particular college, but it may not be a fit for that youngster. And I think some of that has to do with uh, the plethora of transfers year after year after year. Uh, the other side of it, though, I think also shoe companies don't educate the parents well enough. Um, they run these camps, they have access to parents, they don't educate them well enough as to the basis for choice of particular schools and why it's important for the fits to be um, that type of uh, situation where a kid can go to a school that really fits him academically as well as from a school uh, basketball standpoint. I don't think the shoe companies do a good enough job because they have the access. It should be their responsibility. Do you support Commissioner Silver's proposal to raise the, the age limit for the NBA to age 20? It seems to me that when kids come into college, a lot of them believe they're going to be one and dones, but actually very few of the ones who go in thinking they're one and dones end up being one and dones. And I just worry that they're not taking their education seriously enough because they think, why do I need to go to class and keep my grades up? I'm not going to be here next year. And it would seem to me that a forcing mechanism of that second year at least would require people to take their studies more seriously and maybe they actually find something educational that they enjoy that they can be passionate about like basketball. We kind of took the words right out of my mouth. I, I certainly do agree with Adam's proposal and I would go a step further and make it three years. Um, if a young man chooses at 18 not to go to college, he still has an avenue uh, of professional uh, opportunity to go through, and that is the NBA Developmental League. Now, culturally, that doesn't make sense for a lot of these kids because they think if you go to the DL that you're not a good player, which I think nothing could be further from the truth. That's a place where you develop. However, if you do go to college, I think the exposure for two and three years is going to make you a better player. I, I agree that you know many times kids come in after their first year, they think they're going to be one and done, and then the pros tell them, hey, you need another year. They come back for another year, and a significant number of them are told, you need a third year. And ultimately, you know, they develop their skills, they become better players, and gee, somebody actually might get an education as well. How about that? Um, but in the end, I think it's a good idea uh, 
for kids to be able to think about the two or maybe three years simply because it makes them not only better players but better people. Well, you're the ultimate role model for a kid coming in to play college basketball because you excelled in college, All-American, then you go up and play 10 years in the NBA, and then you go and you get a law degree from Harvard University. When you sit and talk to these kids who are young, impressionable, and they're just thinking about basketball as their future, how do you instill this value of education and use yourself as that role model? Well, one of the things that I tell a lot of young men is obviously the numbers are against you as far as being a professional athlete playing the NBA. But if you are fortunate enough to make it there, now you want to develop whatever resources that you're allowed to get from playing that game. You want to develop them so that there's life beyond basketball. To me, self-reliance and community responsibility are two keys. And I tell guys, you know, you retire at 32, 34, you can't play golf the rest of your life. You want to have a meaningful life. You want to be someone who people can talk about in the present tense as opposed to the past tense. And I think that's so important and it should resonate, but obviously, you know, at that age, maybe it doesn't because, you know, there's so much focus on the life, if you will. And that, to me, that, that's, that's highly destructive to a young man's dreams and a young man's future. And the final thing I tell him is that I'm no different than you are. You know, whatever I've been able to accomplish, you have that ability if you can focus. So you canvass the country and you probably watch more basketball than anyone. Who Let's put recruiting aside. Who do you believe is the best X's and O's coach in the game today? And if you, it's, I know it's hard to do because some people just get a different caliber of player based on recruiting. But if you just look at who you think teaches the best fundamentals and creates the best basketball team out of what they've got, who do you think is the best in the country right now? Boy, that's, that's tough. I mean, you have a lot of coaches in, in a lot of conferences who can do just that. Sometimes their teams are successful, sometimes they're not. I, I think what you want to do is you want to take a look at teams whose, te whose players overachieve. And, and I think you know, maybe a guy like Tom Izzo who teaches fundamentals, rebounding defense, and you know, can focus on those things which travel. Um, you know, you, your offense may not always travel, but certainly rebounding and defense does. I think Mark Few has done a terrific job on a consistent basis with the teams and the players that he's had. You know, not to take anything away from Mike Krzyzewski or, or um, you know, Roy Williams or Bill Self or any of those guys, but it's the guys who, on a consistent basis, have their teams overachieve, and they may not get the McDonald's All-Americans, but somehow or another, they're always there at the end. Well. The great Len Elmore, thank you very much for your time today. Really appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. Enjoying it.